What's the thing you could do after you take a break? Immediately take another break and explain nothing. Okay, I'm kidding, I actually am going to explain it. I got sick, so my mental health got into a bit of a crisis, and then my physical health decided to, like, join in the action and, like, get into a crisis too, so... Uh, we love that. Also, the last time I tried to film a video, the lighting was really harsh and horrible, so I didn't want to subject anyone to that. I mean, the lighting is still kind of quite harsh in terms of it's go going all on one side of my face. But it's better than it was last time, so hopefully I can upload this one. If you are seeing this, we did it, kids. So one of the hot topics of this year has been Colourpop and their seeming reluctance to slow the fuck down in any sort of capacity. And I feel like other than the environmental impact and what that means and the horror of that, no one's really had a statement about this other than Colourpop is releasing a lot of things. Ah! That's kind of been the only thing anyone's been really saying. So I thought that instead of trying to come up with a new important thesis statement about what this means for the makeup community and go into all of that, I thought why not have fun instead? So today I thought we could play a game. Instead of looking at the next Colourpop release and being like, oh god, they're doing this again, this is exhausting, you need to stop. Instead, we could look towards the next cult pop release and make a little game out of things. So I decided to make a bingo card, which I can't keep on screen for too long because it'll spoil the entire video. So I decided to make cult pop bingo, which is basically, I have 25 uh, spaces, like a bingo card. I'm assuming you'll know what a bingo card looks like if you don't. Um, I'm really sorry, but I do have 25 uh, tropes of a Colourpop release that I'm going to list out, and if you hit bingo on any of them, you win nothing. I don't have prizes for this. But I thought it's a fun way to look at releases instead of just boo or ah, that's cute, I want to get that. Instead, we may as well just make something fun out of the whole thing. You know, the world's falling apart, the Tories have won, and I want to die, so we may as well make something kind of fun out of something kind of terrifying theme consumerism. All right, scary talk over, let's move on to this bingo card and listing all of these things that we're gonna hopefully be checking off in this video. So I'm going to start with a real wild card, and I'm going to start with Space 13, because this is going to be our free space, and this is gonna be New Release Exists. I'm sure that everyone will get that one. Well done, you got one already. All right, onto the rest of the board. Box number one, Super Shock Bundle. I'm counting an eye bundle, or a cheek bundle, or a mix of both. Some kind of super shock bundle has to be involved. Colourpop is renowned for their super shock shadows, they do a lot of them, there have been a lot that have been discontinued, yet they still continue to make more different ones. I'm not very familiar with the super shock shadows, so I, I haven't even tried to keep up with them. But basically, if there's some kind of bundle of super shock shadows involved, or some new super shocks that are out, or something super shocky, tick it off. Box number two, it's a collab. Because Colourpop loves collabs, and I don't know if that feeling is mutual. Is it a collaboration with a pop star? Is it a collaboration with a beauty influencer? Is it a collaboration with some kind of brand? Is it a collaboration with, I don't know, a past collaboration? Is it? Put it down. Box number three. Okay, that really makes sense. This is one of the more subjective boxes that I have, but if you look at a release and you think, okay, that makes sense for Colourpop to release a product like this. So if it's something that maybe fills a gap in their existing lineup, if it's a certain shade that you think they needed to have in their line, if it's a certain formula that you think is reflective of current trends and makes sense to release, then yeah, this is the one to tick off. You did a good job with the 15th release this month and I think that this one is something that's going to hopefully stand the test of time and you won't discontinue in the bye-bye sale like many of the fallen angels. I recently found out that they discontinued the Good Sport palette. I, I think I wanted to cry. Luckily I have that palette, but I just think that it's one of those palettes that is needed on the market and it, it makes me sad that it's been discontinued. Box number four! Packaging is better than what's on the inside. I'm sure that this is something that's going to be ticked off sometime in the next month. Colourpop releases a collection with really gorgeous packaging that has a really nice aesthetic, they're using cool fonts, cool colours, cool print, cool designs, it looks snazzy, it looks jazzy, it looks like you'd want it in your collection, and I couldn't find another word that rhymes with jazzy. 
that wasn't offensive. One recent example is the butterfly collection and the other butterfly collection and the other butterfly collection. All the butterfly collections have really nice packaging but I wasn't that interested in what was inside. Also the new Becky G collection which I don't think the palette is that interesting but the packaging I absolutely love. I just think the aesthetic of that whole collection is really nice though I still think the Soul Bar Hair palette is the god tier palette and you should probably just get that instead. But there are plenty of examples of Colourpop releases where the packaging is like here and the product is like there. It'll do. Number five, monochromatic palette. I'm sure that Colourpop and monochromatic palettes is something that you're used to by now. Uh, I kind of assumed that they'd stop after they finished the whole colour wheel but they're, they're not doing that. They've released even more of them. A lilac palette, a smoky grey palette, which I predicted! But don't think I wasn't gonna mention this. I predicted that they'd make that palette. I'm taking my credit. I'm depositing it. Yeah, so they made that palette. They made a coconut palette. They made Colossus the Fire Dragon version of the coconut palette. They're probably gonna keep on making them at this point. If, if they've made one, take it off. Box number six. There's a pressed glitter in the palette. And when I put my thumbs up, I mean this sarcastically. I really hope that Colourpop is not taking those thumbs up seriously because I do not like having the press glitters in the palettes. And I could easily just make it out as, oh, it's just my opinion, it doesn't really matter that much. But there are a lot of people that really don't like press glitters in the palettes. Even if we go aside from like the whole YouTube sphere, I've seen like people commenting on Tentalia how they really don't like the press glitters and Colourpop just like, I'm sorry, what was that? You wanted more press glitters? Yeah, sure, we'll do it. Why not? Let's do it. More press glitters. You love those, right? Whole palette press glitters. Do you know the monochromatic palette you've been waiting for? Here's a press glitter in it. Is it eye safe? Who gives a shit? Press glitter. And it's just like, oh, why do you keep doing this? You have a gorgeous metallic formula. You make amazing metallic silvers and amazing metallic yellows. And yeah, a lot of other amazing metallic colors that I couldn't think of individually, but they exist. So why do you need press glitters? Just make metallics that are really nice because you can do them really well. You don't put eyelashes on a Lamborghini. Box number seven, an existing shade is in the palette. I'm going to specifically put this to eyeshadow palettes, maybe face palettes, we can probably lump face palettes in with them. But if you see an existing shade from one of the single line of pressed eyeshadows and it happens to be in a new eyeshadow palette, put it in. One I can name is Palooza, which is again a pressed glitter, which was released separately at first but then was also included in the Uh Her Honey palette. I know that one of the ultra exclusive palettes has Bel Air in, which I have in my Custom Ever After High palette. Colourpop is no stranger to reusing a couple of different shades now and again, so if you see something, say something. With your pencil. Oh, I, I just forgot how to count. I'm up to like number eight and I already forgot how to count. Number eight! You spot a pun you like in one of the names! I'm not going to use this video to exclusively attack Colourpop. I think that Colourpop does some really cool stuff. I think they have some really cool names of different things, cute little puns. This video would be a lot more effective if I could actually name any of those puns right now. But sometimes I look at something and I'll be like, oh I like that name, that's a fun name. Like I'll give props to that and it's like, yeah I love that name. They exist. Fun puns and fun shade names exist in Colourpop. Find it and then take it off. I don't know, I, I'm not here to do your job for you. Number nine! Well that came out of nowhere. Do you think that that release was unexpected? If your answer is yes, take it off. For example, I thought that the yellow palette was not unexpected, but I thought that the Frozen collaboration was very unexpected. I did not expect them to do that. I thought that the newest Becky G collab was kind of expected because we had a teaser of it. And also I think that Becky G generally does good collections for Colourpop. Same with Kathleen Light, who we will get onto. We will get onto Kathleen eventually. Trust me. But then other releases, like they've just released like a new champagne highlighter. It's like a standalone and it's like a liquid one as well. Did not expect that one. If you didn't expect it, tick it off. Again, this is more of a subjective one, but you'll know. If you look at something and you're like, what? I didn't expect that. Then you'll know if you can tick it off or not. Number 10, lip bundle. <laughs> this is one of the many bundle related squares in this bingo card. If there is a lip bundle, preferably if it's packaged in its own box, take the damn thing off. Usually it's ultra glossy lips or ultra blotted lips or a combination of the two or those lip tint pencils that they're doing. In the new Becky G collection they have ultra matte lips and lippy pencils. Those count. Lip bundles. Take it off. Number 11. Is this inspired by another release perhaps? 
Do you think that there's a certain formula, a certain palette, colour scheme, anything that is inspired by another release? A lot of brands are doing hydrating foundations right now, and Colourpop brings out a hydrating foundation. Interesting. People are really liking green palettes, and suddenly Colourpop brings out a green palette. Interesting. I can't think of a third one to do the interesting thing with, but... You get the idea. If you think there was some clear inspiration lifted from another release, do the ticky thing. Number 12! Didn't they already make that palette? <coughs> this is especially evident with the whole butterfly collection that they've been coming out with. I'm pretty sure that I saw, like, the second after the Bye Bye Birdie palette and then they released the butterfly palette. I'm pretty sure I thought those were the same palette and then I saw a picture of it on Instagram and I was like, oh, that's the Bye Bye Birdie palette. And then I looked on Trend Move later and I realised, oh no, that's a separate palette. Yeah, if you think that a palette that has just been released is very, very similar to an old palette, if you mistake it for another palette, that's an immediate tick off, but there is like a line of like, how similar does it have to be to qualify for ticking off this box? It's really, again, another subjective one, but I've definitely had a big example of that. Like, I was like, plucked to see that that butterfly palette was a completely separate palette. Get it? Plucked. Like, bird feathers. Because I mentioned the Bye Bye Birdie palette earlier. Okay, that was a shitty pun, but I can't do puns as well as Colourpop. So 13 is the free space, we've covered that one, new release exists. Number 14, Kathleen Lights is involved. <coughs> you knew I would get to Kathleen. Knew she'd have her own square. Apparently she has shares of something, I don't know. Don't take anything I say as true in this video. I'm a complete liar, I'm not even a real orange lip person. These, this isn't my actual lip colour. But if there is some kind of Kathleen Lights collab that's coming out, because there always is. Take it off! You just will not escape from Colourpop's headquarters. She's just gonna sit there suggesting more Zodiac themed products until someone explodes. That's the end goal. 15. New shade of mascara slash cream gel liners. <coughs> I'm assuming you get an extra special prize if they're in a bundle as well. I'm assuming that prize is air because I can't give you a prize, I don't have the budget for prizes. But, for example, there was a new burgundy shade of mascara, which, did they discontinue that? Because I can't find that on the website. They also had like a plum shade of mascara, they also had accompanying liners. If there's a new colour of mascara, or a new liner colour, that gets released with a collection, you, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to do it, you're gonna have to tick it off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm putting you in this very stressful position of having to tick off another box, but it is what it is. Just gonna have to deal with it, sis. Number 16! Pop music reference! <coughs> if you can recognise a pop music reference in a shade name, or a palette name, or a bundle name, put it down! Because they do this a lot. The first thing I think they did it with that I can remember was Little Boat. Was that a, like a Little Pump album? I don't know. I don't really know. SoundCloud rap very much. But they've done Ariana Grande references, they had obviously Thank You Next was an eyeshadow shade, Better Off was a Lux lipstick shade, Seven Springs was a kind of a pun, again, put that in the pun one, but that was a Lux lipstick that was released around springtime. There are other ones they've done, I don't know if Lucky Strike is specifically a reference to the Troy Sivan song, but I don't know, I think it counts. And then recently they've been also doing Billie Eilish references, they had a palette called You Should See Me In A Crown, they had two shades in a palette, they had a shade called Bad Guy, and then right next to it, they had a shade called Duh, because gotta get the kids somewhere. So if you recognise a reference to a pop song, or a pop album, or a pop thing, check it. And if you don't understand it, and you, you don't recognise it, you don't have to, because you are blessed with that lack of knowledge. I don't know why I'm even saying that, I like pop music. Number 17! It is a whole collection. You did not think that Colourpop would just release the palette on its own and call it a day. If they're going to do a release, they're going to release a whole collection. Why release one product when you can release five products? 20 products are better than 10. They do not go by halves, they go by doubles, juicy doubles. But essentially, if it's a collection and not just one product, which it usually is, take it off because it's obviously going to be a collection, like, it, it just is. If it's not a collection, then... It's a rarity. It would probably be better to have a bingo card thing where it's not a collection, I guess. But that's not the point. I'm trying to be nice and generous and have you get bingo, not have you not get bingo. So I'm putting down something a little more common, which is that it's a collection. So of course it's a collection. Number 18! That look like Kylie! <coughs> Do you think a product from the Colourpop line looks like a product from the Kylie Cosmetics line. Because there's been this whole conspiracy for a while that Kylie and Colourpop are kind of the same. Which is sort of true because they're both owned by Seed Beauty, but 
there are deeper rumors around that. So, if you think that a product that's just been released by Colourpop, in terms of the shade, or just the general appearance, or what product it specifically is, if you think that looks like a Kylie product, you better put it down. You're gonna have to come up with those comparisons yourself. Number 19! There are at least three different bundles. I mean, this goes hand in hand with the collection one, but like, there's at least three different bundles. I've mentioned Super Shock bundles, I've mentioned lip bundles, that's all I've mentioned so far. Ooh, teaser. But if there are at least three different bundles, preferably if they come in boxes. If they come in the separate boxes, I kind of think that that makes it more of a bundle. Maybe I should have that be called like a set. Like if it comes in a separate box, it's a set. If it isn't, then it's just a bundle. Are we going to make that distinction? I think it's a little bit late in the video to make that distinction, but more than three bundles slash sets, put it down. Don't argue. Number 20, Ultra Exclusive. I've mentioned Ultra Exclusive Collections, they have done Ultra Exclusive Collections. I believe this year we have had... Eight? At least eight different Ultra Exclusive palettes that I can remember. But that doesn't even include lip products and other bundles, because you know Ultra is not exempt from bundles. As a UK person, Ulta Exclusive Collections don't really affect me, because Ulta doesn't ship to the UK, which is rude and anglophobic, but that's not the subject of this video. Also, this country is a complete fucking shambles and we don't deserve an altar. Okay, political talk over. If it's a multi exclusive, put it down. No, seriously, fuck the Tories. Number 21, there is an intellectual property involved. Is it Hello Kitty? Is it My Little Pony? Is it Disney? Is it Halo Top? Is it a, a thing? If it's like an intellectual property or like a brand that's tied into it, you know what to do. I shouldn't have to tell you, it's 21. But if they release another Disney collection, put it down. If they release My Little Pony Part 2, which they haven't done, I kind of wish they would. My Little Pony Part 2. I never got the first My Little Pony palette or any of the stuff from that collection. It's a shame. But you never know, they might do a collection with Bratz one day, which by the way they should, that would be a complete money pit and people would love that. I happen to have an inkling of what would work. Not to toot my own horn, but toot too. Number 22. Faux Fray Beauty or Soul Body are involved in this somehow. Like, if there's a collection that includes products from the Faux Fray Beauty or Soul Body line, it's included. If it is a Faux Fray Beauty or Soul product, put it in. Because they're always trying to push something new within the line. It's not just Colourpop. You've got Faux Fray Beauty, which is the skincare side. You've got Soul Body, which is the body side of it. I'm not really a body person. There's a reason I shoot myself from up here, because everything below is just a complete disaster that we don't talk about. But that pink champagne highlighter does look really nice. I don't know if it will work on me as a highlighter or as a glowy blush, either way I'm kind of curious. But I, this isn't about new releases, but it, it actually is about new releases. That's the whole point of the video. What I'm saying is that if both Ray Beauty or Soul Body has a product in this collection, you know what to do. Number 23, eyeliner bundle. Another bundle! But do you know how they do those bundles where they have like two or three eyeliners in like a box and they put them in and I don't know who buys them, but you know, they exist. It's worth an inclusion. It's worth putting them in. Like, we'll have them in there. The eyeliner bundles. I have always been really curious about the eyeliners, but I don't know if I would use them practically. I think I'd just kind of look at them in awe and be like, oh, that's really cute. That's really nice. But I'd never really use them. They're cute. But so are pictures. Number 24. Wait a minute, I, I recognize that lipstick. So I have some very specific criteria for this rule, and it's not just, oh, it's another nude. It's like, I have criteria. If it is a color that you recognize from a specific formula, so for example, if you own a certain nude shade of ultra matte lip, and they've come out with a very, very similar nude shade of ultra matte lip that you can barely distinguish, or same thing with the lippy sticks, same thing with the tint pencil thing, same thing with a glossy lip, a blotted lip, so juicy gloss. I can't believe I've got about the so juicy glosses. If you see a lip product being released that is very similar to a lip product that has already been released, you don't have to own it. We're not going to set those kind of unrealistic expectations on audiences in this video or in hopefully any videos that I'm doing. But if you recognize the lipstick, if you see a brick red looks lipstick and you're like, wait a minute, they've already released a brick red looks lipstick, tick the box. And then finally, number 25, still no lippy sticks. 
This is a completely personal one that I've just put on there because I have gripes with it. It feels like Colourpop doesn't really want to release any new lippy sticks. I could say the same thing about the Ultra Matte lips, but they did release some Ultra Matte bundles with Becky G. Right now, the only person keeping those alive, so I salute you, Becky G, because I am one of the few people that actually likes the Ultra Matte lips still, because apparently people don't like those anymore. Which I find upsetting, because I think it's a nice formula. It's drying, but like not that dry. But if there are still no lippy sticks in the collection, take it off. Th this isn't really kind of a one that's for a critical analysis of Colourpop release strategies or whatnot. This is just one that says I kind of want them to make more lippy sticks and it's sad that they don't make more lippy sticks. So make of that what you will. Make that the obligatory Ari wants a moan box. But if they haven't released any lippy sticks, take it off. I think I might put that one in like a if they haven't done it within the month, rather than a whole release thing. I think that expecting them to release lippy sticks constantly is unrealistic. But then again, they release palettes constantly. They release, like, glosses and eyeliners constantly. They probably have a little bit of lippy sticks action. Can't you spread out your rampant consumerism a little bit more evenly, please? I would appreciate that. So, that was Colourpop Bingo. So, I would love to make different cards of this and put them all in different orders and, like, have them to download and print off. I probably won't do that, so you're gonna have to just go off the one in the video. But let me know if you get bingo. I'm assuming you probably will sometime in the next two days, assuming that you'll get there eventually. And if you win, remember, you, you don't win anything, so please don't come expecting a prize. But if you like this video, it's good. And if you didn't, okay. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to make sure you're notified every time that I actually decide to upload something with semi-decent lighting because it's becoming rarer and rarer at this point and it makes me sad. But you know what? The lighting gods just don't like me. And please come say hi to me because I'm lonely. You can do it in the comments. You can do it on my Instagram, you can do it on my Twitter. I've done a new end slide and they're on there, so you can do that. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that little game.